All right. So in case you didn't know, the bees are dying. Mara and I are going to tell you all about it. Say hi, Mara. Hi. Okay. So let's start with part one, the current bee sitch. Take it away, Mara. A U.S. Department of Agriculture report in 2022 found that honeybee losses in managed colonies hit 42%. Modern evidence tells us that there's a couple factors causing the declining bee population. We got pests, parasites, pathogens, poor nutrition, and some good old sublethal exposure to pesticides. Current research suggests that parasites and the diseases they carry are the main threat to bees. The most dangerous of these parasites is a nasty little mite called the Varroa destructor, which infects bees before they emerge as adults. Their parasitic relationship is similar to the one between humans and ticks, specifically the diseases they carry. One that's super detrimental is the deformed wing virus, which is exactly what it sounds like. It deforms the wings, preventing the bees from being able to fly. So if a hive is already unstable due to other issues, an infestation of this disease can wipe it out entirely. Weakened immune systems also leave the hives susceptible to other viral and bacterial diseases, such as American fowl brood, which affects the larvae less than a day old and prevents them from reaching adulthood. Another thing, idiot human farming practices are making it more difficult for the bees to have a well-balanced diet. The way we tend to grow one crop on a piece of land limits the bees' diets to only one type of pollen for an extended period of time. This leaves the bees malnourished and far more vulnerable to the parasites and pathogens previously mentioned, as well as causing the effects of chemical pesticides to hit them harder. The most common ones we use are only effective after one application, and they only infect invertebrates, making them not harmful to humans, livestock, and birds. So obviously no one cares, because, you know, NO BUGS ON MY FOOD! Trace amounts of these pesticides have been found in pollen grains, and though the amount per grain is small, the bees are bringing back so much of the pollen to their hives for food, so it can accumulate to critical levels in the beeswax. This is an issue because it can interfere with bee communication, which is reliant on both chemical and physical signals. These chemicals have been shown to affect the bees' foraging behavior, communication, and larval development, so most of it is our fault, really. Okay, on to part two. Great joke, I know. So, life without bees would actually suck really hard. Fortunately for our selfish nature, approximately 60% of the total volume of food grown worldwide does not require pollination. This includes many staple foods like wheat, rice, and corn. So we could in fact survive without honeybees, but many foods would no longer exist, such as almonds. Good news for you caffeine fiends out there, coffee would become ridiculously expensive and rare. Apples, avocados, onions, and several types of berries rely heavily on bees for pollination, and the disappearance of honeybees would make these foods and many others scarce, and our diets could become much less varied. Kind of like how the bees have a garbage diet right now karma, I guess. Grocery stores would have around half of the fruits and vegetables they usually do, and losing these plants that bees pollinate could potentially start a chain reaction where we lose the animals that rely on these plants to live, and it would continue on up the food chain. So while we could survive, a world without bees would likely greatly struggle to support the human population of 8 billion. So, let's talk a little bit about what we can do to be more sustainable and aid in saving the bees. The bees need our help, and there are plenty of things we can do, so here's just a few ideas on things you can do at home to help. Firstly, you can plant a bee garden. Creating a habitat with plants rich in pollen and nectar allows them to build homes and find yummy and nutritious food to help aid in their lacking diets. Window boxes, flower pots, and planters are some things you can use to put pollen-dependent plants in. Another way to help is ditching those chemicals. Many chemicals such as synthetic pesticides, fertilizers, and herbicides are very harmful. Using organic products and finding natural solutions to gardens can do wonders. Composting is amazing too, as it improves soil health and adds insects to help keep pests away. Bees get most of their nectar from trees, so providing trees for them can be super important. They provide up to thousands of blossoms for them to feed on, and they're also essential for their habitat. Warning, the cutest things you will ever see coming up next. First off, bee bath. Bees get super thirsty working all day. You can create a bee bath by filling a shallow bird bath or bowl with water and putting pebbles in, breaking the surface for them to land on and rehydrate after a long, hard day at work. Along with bee baths, you can build them bee homes. Bumblebees build nests in undisturbed land, so if you leave a plot of land just for them, it can be their safe haven. Another thing you can build, two words, bee compost. It's basically a little birdhouse, but for the bees to live in, so a bee house. They have small tube apartments which allow species like mason bees to reside in. The condos provide an imitative hive or burrowing environment, which can be a great benefit for areas that lack bee-friendly trees or safe burrowing spaces. Supporting local beekeepers and organizations can also be super beneficial for the bees. It's a very easy way to help and show appreciation for the bees. You can buy locally made honey and beeswax products. 
They create many things such as soap, lotion, and candles. Also, donating to aid in the growth of their programs would do wonders as well. Some programs helping the bees are the National Wildlife Federation, Pollinator Partnership, Planet Bee Foundation, Karma Honey Project, the Bee Conservancy, and many others that can be found on the web. And there's some local ones around here too, like Western New York Honey Producers Association, Honey Bee Made LLC, Empire State Honey Producers, and many more.